In this video, I will walk you through free response question number four from the 2006 AP Calculus exam. This problem is about position, velocity, acceleration, and the first fundamental theorem of calculus. Because this problem is based on a chart, we will estimate our integrals using a Riemann sum. Rocket A has a positive velocity V of t after being launched upward from an initial height of zero feet at time t equals zero seconds. The velocity of the rocket is recorded for selected values of t over the interval from zero to 80 seconds, as shown in the table above. Part A. Find the average acceleration of rocket A over the time interval from zero to 80 seconds. Indicate units of measure. Here are some notes that you will need to understand part A. Let's start with the basics. Acceleration is the change in velocity divided by the change in time. Instantaneous acceleration can be expressed as a derivative, dv dt, which does equal v prime, but never lose sight of the fact that instantaneous acceleration is still the change in velocity divided by the change in time, dv over dt. Average acceleration will be expressed like an old school slope where we do y minus y over x minus x. The change in velocity will be velocity at time b minus velocity at time a, divided by the change in time, which will be time b minus time a. The average acceleration over the time interval from 0 to 80 seconds will equal the velocity at time 80 minus the velocity at time 0 divided by time 80 minus time 0. The velocity at time 80 is 49, and the velocity at time 0 is 5. This equals 44 over 80 feet per second squared. Do not forget the units. So the average acceleration equals 11 over 20 feet per second squared for the time interval from 0 to 80 seconds. Part B, using correct units, explain the meaning of the integral of V of t from 10 to 70 in terms of the rocket's flight. Use a midpoint Riemann sum with three subintervals of equal length to approximate the integral of v of t from 10 to 70. Let's review the first fundamental theorem of calculus. f at b equals f at a plus the integral of f prime from a to b. This means that the end value is equal to the initial value plus the net change in value from A to B. Let's rewrite the first fundamental theorem of calculus using this integral. So on the inside, we have a derivative because V of t is the derivative of the position function. I'm going to use Y of t to represent the position function because we are talking about a rocket that is traveling vertically. So that's the Y direction. So y at b, that's the end value, should equal y at a, all right, the initial height, plus the integral from a to b of the velocity. So remember what this all means. This says that the end height is equal to the initial height plus the change in height from A to B. Putting in the limits of integration that we are given, we have Y at 70 equals Y at 10 plus the integral of velocity from 10 to 70. And this means the height at T equals 70 is equal to the height at T equals 10 plus the change in height from 10 to 70. Remember that we are being asked to explain the meaning of the integral of v of t from 10 to 70. And we've done that. This means the change in the height of the rocket from t equals 10 to t equals 70. 
The integral of v of t from 10 to 70 is the change in the height of rocket A in feet from t equals 10 seconds to t equals 70 seconds. I want to emphasize that we have to mention the units in our summary. If you don't say in feet, and if you don't mention seconds, you will lose a point. Moving on to the second half of part B, use a midpoint Riemann sum with three sub intervals of equal length to approximate the integral of V of T from 10 to 70. We know that the integral of a function from 10 to 70 is equal to the area under the curve between 10 and 70. The idea of a Riemann sum is that we can use rectangles or other shapes, often trapezoids, to approximate this area. In the case of a midpoint Riemann sum, you imagine drawing your rectangles so that the midpoint of the top segment of the rectangle touches the curve. For example, if I wanted to estimate the area under the curve between t equals 30 and t equals 50, I would put my 30 on the left, my 50 on the right. That means the midpoint would be 40. The height of the rectangle will be the value of the function at the midpoint. So the value of v at t at 40 is 35. So the height of my rectangle is 35. I would estimate the area under the curve from 30 to 50 by calculating the area of this rectangle, which is base times height. The base is the width from 30 to 50. That's a width of 20. And then the height is 35. So this product would represent or approximate the area under the curve from 30 to 50. If I want to approximate the area under the curve from 10 to 70, I can use multiple rectangles. In this case, we are told to use three rectangles of equal width to approximate the area from 10 to 70. If I want to have three intervals of equal width between 10 and 70, they will be 10 to 30, 30 to 50, and 50 to 70. The midpoint of each interval will be 20 and 40 and 60. Remember that each interval corresponds to a rectangle. We will use the base and the height of each rectangle to calculate the area of the rectangle. The base of all three rectangles will be 20 because we were asked to find three intervals of equal width. And the base of each rectangle is the width of each interval. The height of each rectangle will be the value of the function at the midpoint. So for this first interval, the midpoint is 20, and then the value of the function is 22. So that will be the height of the rectangle. Similarly, the height of the second rectangle will be the value of the function at 40, which is 35. And for the last rectangle, the value of the function at 60 is 44. So the integral of v of t from 10 to 70 will be approximated by the sum of the areas of these three rectangles. We will do base times height plus base times height plus base times height. If we include the units, this is an acceptable answer for a free response question. Remember that the integral of velocity is the change in position. So we are talking about feet. So the units will be in feet. This simplifies to 2020 feet. So this is how I would show my final answer for part B. Hey guys, I would actually recommend that you leave your answer in this form. This is a non-calculator problem, so I wouldn't want you to risk making a careless error as you did all of this multiplication by hand and end up losing a point for no reason. Also, since this is a perfectly acceptable answer, 
why even spend the time doing it? All right, you've got better things to do. Move on to the next problem. Just remember to always include your units. Part C, rocket B is launched upward with an acceleration of A of T equals three over the square root of T plus one feet per second per second. At time T equals zero seconds, the initial height of the rocket is zero feet, and the initial velocity is two feet per second. Which of the two rockets is traveling faster at time T equals 80 seconds? Explain your answer. Clearly, we need to calculate the velocity of rocket B at time T equals 80 seconds. They gave us a function for the velocity of rocket A. Uh, they called it V of T. But we don't have a function for the velocity of rocket B, so we, we need to define our own. So go ahead and make this statement. Let V B of T equal the velocity of rocket B in feet per second at time T seconds. Notice how I'm mentioning the units as I define this new function. Make sure you do the same. Remember the fundamental theorem of calculus? Of course you do. Let's rewrite the first fundamental theorem of calculus using acceleration as our rate. We know that acceleration is the derivative of velocity. So we will have velocity at B equals the velocity at A plus the integral of acceleration. We need to find the velocity at time t equals 80 seconds. So that will be the end time B. We are given the initial velocity, two feet per second, at time t equals zero seconds. So that is the initial time A. So now we have this. Again, we were told that the initial velocity is two feet per second. So we can go ahead and put two right here. Also, we have a formula for acceleration. So let's go ahead and put three over the square root of t plus one in for a of t. All we need to do is evaluate this integral and we will have the velocity at t equals 80. So we can take the three from the numerator and put it out in front of the integral. Also, I would like to rewrite this using a negative exponent. This would be the same thing as t plus one to the negative one half power. Technically, I am about to do a u substitution right now. I am treating t plus one as u. However, because u prime will just equal one, I can do this mentally. So I have my u. I'm doing the power rule of integration, which says you add one to the exponent. So uh, negative one half plus one is one half. And then you divide by the new exponent. So dividing by one half is the same as multiplying by two. So I am multiplying by two right here. This is a definite integral. So instead of putting a plus C, I will put my limits of integration zero to 80. And let's go ahead and replace the three times two with a six. We don't need a whole nother step just for that. To evaluate using the limits of integration, we need to find the value at 80 minus the value at zero. So here is my value at 80 minus the value at zero. Recognizing that the one half power is the same thing as the square root, we get two plus six radical 81 minus six radical one. Six radical 81 is just six times nine, which is 54. So we have two plus 54 minus six. So, the velocity of rocket B at t equals 80 seconds is 50 feet per second. All right, time to start including these units. In the setup of the problem, we were given this table of values, which indicates that the velocity of rocket A at time t equals 80 seconds is 49 feet per second. The velocity of rocket B at t equals 80 
is 50 feet per second, which is greater than 49 feet per second. For the final answer, we say the velocity of rocket B at t equals 80 seconds equals 50 feet per second, which is greater than 49 feet per second. So rocket B is traveling faster than rocket A at t equals 80 seconds. For full credit, you must include your units in the final answer. So every velocity should be given in feet per second, and every time should be given in seconds.